back. We're live. Welcome back. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel, and this is Coronavirus. What's next? We have uh, Stephanie Dalton, Tim Apicella, Cynthia Sinclair, Winston Welch, our regular group, to talk about coronavirus. But you know, the, the fact is it's all mixed up with Trump anyway. This is still the biggest issue in the country. Let us not forget. So let me ask you first about this extraordinary thing that appeared in the paper about Michigan. Michigan, uh, a lot of the election officials have certified the votes and submitted their affidavits to that effect to the authorities in Michigan. And yet Mr. Trump was reported this morning as calling one by him a Palmer. And we have to surmise there were many others um, and telling her that there were death threats against her and she ought to consider uh, recanting her um, sworn affidavit of the count. Um, I should add that uh, he also invited a number of officials uh, from uh, Michigan to come to the White House for a meeting with him over the weekend to discuss this matter. And uh, by the way, on Monday, they, they, they finalized the certifications for that state. Your reaction, Tim Apicella? Well, my reaction is, number one, if I'm one of those people being called to go to the White House, I'm not going because I don't want to be infected with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Number two is, um, if she's already signed an affidavit verifying the vote from the population, the voters, uh, Donald Trump is starting to tiptoe into the sea of election tampering. Uh, not unlike Lindsey Graham, who did the same thing, as far as I'm concerned. Of, you know, here he is, a senator of South Carolina calling the Secretary of State of Georgia and uh, suggesting that ballots, mail-in ballots could be tossed if there were some inconsistencies with a few ballots. So between Lindsay and, and the President of the United States, they're engaging very closely to election tampering. And I don't know, uh, obviously, uh, William Barr's not gonna do a thing about it because, you know, William Barr is William Barr, the most faithful lackey ever put into the place of the Attorney General. But my, that's my initial reaction, and I think it's disgusting. It is, it is really, truly disgusting. And it is an example of the, the further decline um, of the Republican, of the Trump and Republicans. So let's go to Hawaii for a moment, Winston. You know, I've, I've always said, and Tim and I discussed this a long time ago, um, that he's coming for us, that he will affect our lives, that we can't stave it off because, it, you know, it'll, he'll find a way to affect us, everyone. And here we are at Christmas, and it is affecting us, everyone. Let me give you some examples of that. Um, the cases here are up. Cases on the, in the country are 160,000 cases, a new, uh, new cases a day. Hospitalizations, 80,000 uh, new hospitalizations a day. Um, the death rate uh, happily is down um, because I guess best practices among the healthcare professionals. And we have 250 plus thousands of people who already died. It would take a long time for us to dedicate this show to just counting to that number. Now in Hawaii, the businesses are closing permanently. Tourism is on life support. The economy is literally falling apart. People are in the streets. There's no support for them. Uh, there's no money for them, no federal money, no state money. Uh, the state has a deficit of it depends on who you talk to, but something in the order of $2 billion, which is a huge percentage of our you know, uh, annual budget. Um, <clears throat> and we have crime, which is what I, I heard yesterday from a fellow who was Akamai about that. We have a, a dramatic increase in crime. Uh, there are not, of, not enough tourists to, to mug and rob. Um, so the criminals have come around for the local people. And you see that in uh, the next door, you know, uh, social media publication, you see uh, there's all kinds of crime going on, affecting us and all of us at home in our homes, even when we're home. Um, so, you know, um, what's your reaction to that, Winston? I mean, this is a, some concern because, you know, here we talk on Trump week and on, um, <clears throat> I should say, uh, rediscovering America and on coronavirus, we talk about things that are happening far away. And yet, they come closer. They are coming closer. They're affecting our lives and they're likely to affect our lives more. What do you think? Well, it is, it, when you said, uh, is Donald Trump going to affect us? Um, yeah, in, in every way. He's affected the, the mental health of, of 
of the nation who's affected our, our social health, um, our economic health, our, our physical health, obviously, with the whole denial of COVID, with the blaming, with the, the weird, just the weirdness around it. And now you've got a quarter million people dead. Um, we're leading the world in that, which is uh, shameful. It's not that we are the only nation affected by this, but certainly policies of the federal government or lack thereof have absolutely contributed to this, as well as politicizing this so that wearing a, a mask, which is the basic common sense for a hundred years, isn't being followed. Again, in the absence of federal leadership or with whatever this leadership is called, we have to go back to whatever's local. Local means start with yourself and work your way out. Are you taking measures for yourself when you go out, when you go to the store? Are you washing your hands? Are you wearing your mask? Are you looking after the people in your family and your circle? Are you not going out when you know that it's a place of exposure? I mean, I just read something in Washington State. 300 people went to a wedding last month and it became a super spreader event. What, how are these people, why are these people having weddings? Why would you endanger people's lives at this point by having a mass event like that? So you have to think about this and don't give in to peer pressure. There was an article on COVID fatigue. We've all got COVID fatigue, but you know what? You still got to wash your hands. You still got to wear your mask and you're going to have to for the next year conceivably because that vaccine isn't coming out. Now, when it does come out, then it's incumbent upon people to, to, uh, to trust in Trust in Pfizer, uh, trust in AstraZeneca and, uh, and Johnson and & Johnson and the other ones that come out. And obviously, we're all going to be guinea pigs in this. But it starts with personal responsibility because we don't have it at the federal level. At the local and state level, we seem to be doing better here in Hawaii than most places. Are we suffering? Absolutely. Help is on the way. Joe Biden is coming in. The spigots are going to open up and we're going to have relief. Um, in ways that we can't imagine uh, right now, but we can uh, we can hope for. Well, and me, I think let that's me what go to Cynthia for. about that. Is Joe Biden coming in, Cynthia? You have my favorite, my favorite, very favorite person, uh, Emily Murphy, standing in the way. There's a lot of her to stand in the way, and and she is making it impossible just one person uh, to have a transition, even a transition on COVID. And Biden has made it clear, as far as he's concerned, she is causing deaths. A number of people have written letters to her. Maybe a lot of people should be writing letters to her, um, telling her to get off and, uh, and allow the transition to go forward. But she is loyal to Trump, to a fault, as so many are. And she is blocking efforts to, to, do, to work on COVID effectively. So <clears throat> where, where are we in terms of the transition and my friend, uh, uh, um, Emily Murphy. <laughs> well, she's standing firm, as you said. <clears throat> I have a friend who gave, gave me the perfect analogy for this transition thing. It's kind of like, okay, we had our car stolen. I mean, we're all very happy, but that joy, that peace, that it's not there yet. We were, you know, we were celebrating in the streets that first day but it's like, yeah, the after effects were like, whoa, maybe it's not really here. And so my friend, the analogy that he used, is like you get your car stolen, okay? And you get it back. So you're very happy that you got your car back. The only problem is the radio has been stolen. The side mirrors are, you know, gone. The back bumper has gone. And one of the uh, side windows is smashed in. So great, you got your car back, but it's in a wreck just like our country, we're getting it back, but it's in a wreck. So I'm, I'm afraid of how much time it's gonna take for Biden to actually get things back on track that by then four years will be up and, and he won't actually be able to move forward because he'll be doing so much damage control when he gets there. And well, let's unpack that for a minute. Stephanie, <clears throat> what, what is Trump doing right now? What is he doing positively? And more to the point, what is he doing negatively to damage the country? I mean, I, I totally agree with, with what Cynthia said. The idea is to pass it off. It's a, it's a relay race. You pass it off to the next runner, and you want to put it in as good a shape as you possibly can. So it, it would appear that Trump wants to put it in as bad a shape as you possibly can. What are the markers of that? What, what is he doing 
to put it in good shape? What is he doing to put it in bad shape for the next for the next president? I think you just put a pin in it. He's just, as I said, the 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 metaphor of a cat just continuing to work it, uh, and he's doing everything he can, pulling the threads to get these votes down. He actually must have some uh, a, a fantasy that this is going to happen, but. The answer to why he's doing it is, of course, his self-centeredness and his uh, focus uh, on this imaginary path that he has cut forward. And he thinks he's making progress and he's going to stay at it, at it uh, and, until he can divert from it and create all of these other disasters. So we, we're going through all of that now. And uh, some of his people are falling out because we have two states only left who have not put in a mask requirement, and that's South Dakota and Florida, both of which are in, engulfed with a virus at this time. So he's uh, there are people still holding for him. And I also heard that those two governors have uh, aspirations to be president or run for president in 24. And what there again, what, what, what are we coming to if that's the kind of behavior and concern for the American people that gets- What about foreign policy? And the foreign policy, he's he's not on that, except where he's going to see that that's his his opportunity. I mean, we already have him. He's in the Iranians who um, are you know very vulnerable, and they're on the verge of disaster with with their economy. In addition to the COVID, and he's playing nuclear button pushing, and that again is raising the concern about why one person is uh, you know. Um, obligated with this one button. So, so something that as a question has come up before we've discussed, you know, we have to reconsider some of these policies in place and how, how to manage it better so we can all survive on Mother Earth. So the saddest thing I've heard this week about the way people are entrained to him is nurses, a nurse talking about assisting uh, patients in the hospital with advanced COVID likely to pass saying they don't believe that they have that because it doesn't exist. It's gone. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Well, so, Tim, now, you know, the uh, stock market seems to be going up. Nevertheless, uh, it has really not paid the price of all this craziness. Um, and, you know, you wonder about what drives the stock market. I mean, are they reading the same publications that we are? Are they talking about the same issues? And yet uh, they seem to be driven by, by Trump. Um, I, you know, how does that work? Why are we at 30,000 on the Dow? Um, that's, that's extraordinary. Uh, and the other, the other thing is, is, is it sustainable? You know, one of these days, you know, the title of our show today is, uh, uh, when, is when is the reality going to settle in? Um, when is the reality going to settle in in the, in the stock market with a failed economy? We're not going to have vaccines for at least six months um, and maybe longer for most Americans and maybe longer for other places in the world. Um, you know, the country is essentially coming apart and yet the market is up at 30. What's going on? Well, Jay, this was the question before we went on air that I said I didn't know. So you're asking me a question I really don't know the answer to because the, you're right, the fundamentals are being ignored. Unemployment's being ignored. Uh, manufacturing is being ignored. All the key economic indicators are being ignored. So is this just a confidence for Donald Trump? But now Donald Trump is no longer going to be president. So it, it, I don't know. Um, the one thing I do know is that when it, when it does finally, the realization that the, the economic fu uh, fundamentals are, are really in bad shape, when that realization to the marketplace hits, you can see a, a, a tumultuous fall in the Dow and the NASDAQ and the S&P. Expect it. We're going to see a horrible fall. Now, will we see it fall as fast as we did back in March, where we went from basically 29,000 on the Dow down to 19,005? I don't know if it's going to be that fast and that quick, but um, I think it's time for people to kind of realize that they're sitting pretty, pretty they're, they're sitting pretty on their 401ks, and there might be some impetus to preserve some of that, some of the gains that they got back from the 19.5, uh, you know, low point back in March of 2020. 
I wish I could give you a better answer on what's going on, but I just don't know. Yeah, well, no, nobody knows, but there are some advisors out there that are saying, get out, that this is made for a crash because we, we have enough data to know that it can't get good. It's going well, to get much worse. But here's the problem. Where better. do you flee to? What markets do you flee to? You go to the bond markets, you know, a CD is one quarter of 1% if you're lucky to get that. Um, you know, what, what other instruments are you going to be tied to? You know, the Fed is at 0% overnight Fed funds rate. Um, you know, your 30 year mortgage now is at two and three quarter. So where do you make your money? If you start dipping into your principal, if you're retired, you start dipping into your principal and start spending that versus hopefully some interest you had gained in, in spending on the interest. Uh, so that's why I, I believe so many people have gotten into the, the stock market because there's yield there and there was opportunity for upside. But, um, you know, you're basically, I'd rather go to Las Vegas and throw my money on uh, 13 black. All right. So, Winston, you spoke earlier about the, um, the vaccines. That's the big hope, isn't it? Um, but what's the status? It, I found it very strange that uh, Pfizer came out with uh, a 90% eff efficacy number. Uh, Moderna came out with a 94.5 e efficacy number. And then within one day after that, all in the same week, Pfizer came out, oh, whoops, we're 95, better than Moderna. Does this have a smell about it? You know, the, the reality is we're in uncharted territory here. And uh, people will complain about big pharma. But you know what? If your cat bites you, you need to go get an IV. You pretty much thank God big pharma exists because that's going to, you know, flood your veins with whatever you need to kill the cat scratch fever. Is our system flawed is it is it tragic in america the way that we pay so much more and uh and there's such inequity certainly but the the fact is that we have had really a i don't want to say warp speed but we've had a very fast um robust worldwide development this is not an american development now you might say that that groundwork is laid in this country because of excellence in higher education, but this is a worldwide effort. These are German companies, Swiss companies, Japanese companies, American companies. They're not loyal to any nation. They're loyal to themselves. And they're chasing the almighty dollar, yen, ruble, and uh, the peso, uh, euro. They wanna make money off of this, but they also have a responsibility. Their job is to make these vaccines, is to make them uh, uh, safe and and also to roll them out because uh, that's they've got shareholders and that they have to answer to. So if the numbers change a little bit, I'm not worried about it. It'll be interesting to see how it rolls out and who they're going to um, get it to first. But I am actually surprised that it did come out so soon. I mean, we've never ever had uh, vaccines developed like this. We are guinea pigs. Uh, this virus, everyone's a guinea pig, honestly. And um, you know, it, it just shows you, though, what we can do when we put our minds to it. Well, let's uh, let's have a real demonstration of it. You know, so far, it's um, it's it's only news reports. It isn't actually it isn't actually a vaccine. It isn't actually deployed. And at every time you listen, it's going to be a little further into the future. And now yes, it's like and, six months away. Yeah. And um, when you have a million, 10 million, five million, you'll start seeing the side effects in here. You'll start to see if it's actually working. So, uh, you know, but uh, I don't know. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I think there's, <laughs> when, when it comes out, uh, then I will get the vaccine. And I think most sane people will probably get it, barring some massive evidence that shows that it's a bad thing to do. But at this point, um, you know, I get my flu shot. Well, it's, it's all we got. It's all we got. And, and, and even now... Uh, as I, I guess it was Cynthia pointed out, there are some states that still don't buy in. Some and we don't have it, Jay. I mean, that's the in. reality. We do not have it. Well, you say it's all we got. What we got is the ability to isolate, to wear your mask in public, to wash your hands, to follow best practices for public and personal health. That's well, what we that article you sent around, Winston, about fatigue uh, is a really important statement. People are bloody tired. Uh, this started in March. They've been locked up or, you know, restraining themselves since March. They feel they paid their dues. They feel if they don't have it yet, they probably won't get it. Um, all kinds of bizarre thinking about it. And I think they're going complacent. 
And I think that even if you tell them to wear a mask and do social distancing and blah, 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 a lot of them are like going complacent. This is a big problem. It's going to get worse too. And, and, the, and the body count is also going to go up. I mean, we, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we double where we're at right now in two or three months from all the indications from what we see that this is going to be some very bad times now. And the fact that you, there's, there's no hospital beds right now. There's no ICU beds in so many uh, states and locations around this nation. Um, that's not going anywhere, given that you're having to now suddenly change people's behavior where they were fighting it as a belief that it wasn't. I mean, you have Scott Atlas telling people, you have the president still after all this time telling people to rise up in Michigan and and don't follow public health policy. It's absolutely insane. And when you're fighting that, guess what? Uh, that virus is going to spread. It doesn't it doesn't get up on its own two feet and walk around. You got to carry it to, uh, there. So yeah. we got a lot of work to do here, but. Um, well, let's, let's talk about the mental together. capacity of our president for a minute, Cynthia. Um, you know, one thing that struck me remarkable, remarkable, is this Mexican general. I don't know if you saw that. The Mexican general who was part of a cartel, uh, who, who was killing people in Mexico as, as part of a cartel, drug cartel. And, um, you know, he was involved in selling, trafficking drugs into the United States. The FBI was investigating him. They arrested him a month ago and set him up for a trial here in these United States on some really hideous crimes. And um, all of a sudden, yesterday, William Barr dropped all the charges and sent him back to Mexico without ever, you know, without ever facing American justice. Uh, now he's going to face Mexican justice, in which he is a major corrupt figure and a buddy of the president, AMLO. So what does that tell us about you know, where Trump is spending his time and the decisions he's making and why he's making them? It, 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 it bears a huge flag of corruption, doesn't it? Well, as, as per Trump's usual modus operandi, right? That's what he does. He has himself surrounded by corrupt people that help him uh, continue his corrupt behavior. You know, I'd like to go back just a little to speak to, and it's partly this Trump thing too. This is where the damage of Trump downplaying this virus comes in. When you go to take your car into the mechanic, right? If they tell you to come back in an hour because it'll be done in an hour, you come back in an hour and it takes five hours, you're mad, you're angry. Why did they tell you that? So here, Trump's been saying, be gone tomorrow. Well, tomorrow has come and gone and it's still here. So same thing, he says it again. And that's the whole thing. It's like, well, you said it was supposed to be gone. It can still be here. That kind of mentality, I think, is what seeps down into people's minds about not really accepting the reality of the truth. I got some numbers for us here today, okay? We have 11.6 million people that are infected. We have 250,000 people, like you said earlier, that have died. We had 1,800 people die in one day yesterday. That just floored me. I almost hit the ground when I heard that. 1,800 people in one day? I was freaking out over 1,000 people. Oof. So Texas has the highest with um, 1.13 million and 20,000 deaths. Then California, then Florida. Florida's third. They've got 905,000 cases and 17,000 deaths, but no mask mandate. You know, and then Illinois, then New York, and it goes down like that. So that's the order that they go in. But <clears throat> until people understand that this is not going away, that Trump lied to them, we're going to be in this mess of people trying to continue to deny it. Yeah. So what can Biden do right now, Stephanie? I mean, I, I suppose he has, a, he has a semi bully pulpit. He can get up there and say things like he did the other day uh, over um, Emily Murphy and that she was causing deaths by, by delaying the transition. But what else can he do? He's forming a commission. But what else can he do with the commission? It feels like these things are in place for a long time and that no matter what he does, he's going to have a major challenge on his hands. 
Well, I, I mean, I think he's got the creative uh, brain to do this kind of stuff. I mean, obviously, as Cynthia says, these numbers are just rolling off duck's backs. Who cares? I mean, we're moving up to World War II numbers and probably going to sur surpass that those deaths, which is unthinkable, but is likely to happen. But um, what about, we have all of these deaths and all of these sick, pe sick people, and the worst thing that can happen to us actually is to go and not have um, any doctors and nurses left. I mean, you can have a hundred ICU beds and so what, put me in one. If there's no MDRN there to do business on me, it, I might as well be at the curb, right? So where are the awards for the people that are, you know, so many have died, but like with Biden can, can start getting these people in the spotlight. Let's give them the congressional medal. I mean, they've been working around the clock for 10 months, for God's sake. Could somebody please, pull out the heroes just so we can have a hero thing and start paying attention to that kind of positive thing. And also our states, one of our states is the highest in the world, world for statistics. Okay, so how, who's the best? Hey, Maine, give them a star. Hey, Hawaii, I don't know if we're doing good enough, but definitely Maine and Utah. Hey, this is good. Utah's going to doing things they should do. So what about let's get some uh, focus on the positive here. I, there, there's no hope to continue. Uh, well, Tim, I want to talk to you about the agenda. You know, yeah. <clears throat> we, we changed the name of the show, which I thought was the right thing to do. Um, your show from Trump week to uh, America, you know, uh, re re rediscovered. Um, but, you know, it, with all of that, um, Trump is still setting the agenda. The, the media is just hanging on every word, every, every maniacal, ridiculous thing that he does. And, and it just gets worse and worse. Uh, you know, in fact, what he's doing now by approaching officials in various states and trying to get them change their votes and their minds, um, that's, that's a federal crime for sure. Um, so he's setting the agenda. And it feels like we're, you know, we're in the Red Sea and the Red Sea has parted and the waves are, the waves are up there on both sides. And one of these days they're going to come down on us. And, I'm, you know, who's to say what's going to happen right now? This the silence in terms of moving ahead on, on democracy is is deafening. Where are we? Where are we going? Who's setting the agenda? What is the agenda? We're lost. We're lost as a nation. We're in the desert before we hit the Red Sea, I mean, or after we hit the Red Sea. I mean, we're lost in the desert on this. And, you know, this goes back to the cult of personality and the propaganda that Donald Trump is so successful uh, to implement upon the, 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 the citizens of this country. And he's a master at it. And unfortunately, the media can't pull away. It's like a moth to a light. They can't pull away from him. And unfortunately, until Joe Biden can get the media's attention and becomes president, uh, the agenda is stuck on Donald Trump and all his craziness. And I don't know if I think Cynthia's uh, car analogy is really quite appropriate. By the time we get this car back, we won't recognize it. The paint job will be tarnished. The mirrors are broken off. The radio stolen. The back seat's been torn in half. Uh, we won't recognize it. And it's going to take uh, President Biden four years to even try to fix it. So what can we do between now and then? I, I just think we have to... I think we just have to look at what are the issues uh, as a citizen of this country? What are the principles? And try to steer towards the mission of this country, the mission of democracy, and try to just pay attention to that and as in, in our daily lives as well. And so when we hear this craziness of, of Trump, that we steer clear of it or we rebuke it on the spot. And for the next 60 days, it's gonna be very, very tough to do that because we're gonna get into arguments with loved ones and family and friends but we're in a critical time right now where we can't afford to, to let our guard down. And that's my feeling. Uh, just, we, it's so critical and we got to keep our guard up and be vigilant. Uh, I think you, you quoted many times in the past, democracy only works if you're vigilant. Yeah. The price of li liberty is eternal vigilance. Nathan Hale, a long time ago. Okay, uh, uh, Winston, I'd like a word from you uh, to close, to, uh, to summarize your thoughts at this moment. Well, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up next week. So, folks, we got a lot to be thankful for. It's great. We can have the show and we can talk about whatever we want to. And half of our, more than half of our nation 
came to its senses and said, we had enough of this. And the other half probably did too. They just, they'll come around. They'll we'll come around. Ourselves. We have our own, take personal responsibility, stay at home and, and make a list of things you're thankful for. Be thankful that you're not spreading the virus or getting it by going to somebody else's house. Yeah. And, all right. Uh, Cynthia, and all the what, what's your, you what have. message you, you know, want to leave? A, we have a lot to be grateful for, but mostly, you know, focus on your own responsibility at this point, because it's not going to come from the federal government right now, but what hope is on the horizon and it's coming in eight weeks and it's coming right now. Like you said, uh, Joe Biden's already rolling stuff out. We can look toward the future. Cynthia. Okay. I have an isolation well-being checklist and that's what I'm going to end with today. One, shower. Med this is a daily isolation well-being checklist. I should be specific. Um, shower, medication, drink water. Clean one thing or a space in your house. <clears throat> Tend something growing or living, you know, an animal, a person, a, a plant, even if that's what you've got. But tend it, right? Um, be mindfully present to a sound or a song a sensory feeling, something you see, and a spiritual practice. Okay, these are the last few. Reach out to a human outside your home. Do one thing to get your heart rate up. Do one thing you'll be glad you did later. Do one thing just because you need to. And get in at least one good laugh. And I say <laughs> good laugh before breakfast. <laughs> Cynthia, you are so beautiful. <laughs> Stephanie, what have you got? Can you beat that? <laughs> well, I some of those boxes, so I'm, I'm just really thrilled to hear that those are the right ones to um, have. So thank you, Cynthia, for that. It's just fabulous. Look, I think what is our, um, uh, our pleasure, our, our place to, to fall into and feel good is that Biden won. I mean, this is so miraculous that we did it, okay? Just imagine how easily it could have gone the other way. And, and the cat's at it, still pulling the threads and playing with it. So he's going to do everything he can to go unlikely, as all the authorities have said. So I think we need to rest into that and have some ease and look to the future for the, and the positive outcomes. Thank you, Stephanie. That's, that's a really... A really balanced thought. Uh, Tim, you're the last. You want to oh share goodness. some final thought? My goodness. Um, I'm going with Cynthia's comments that I heard, and the two of them particularly I heard, uh, drink. So I'm going to have a gin martini later tonight and get your heart rate up. I'm going to watch more news. <laughs> so. OK, all right. Yeah, you need the gin martini to take the news. As for me, I'm going to have a gin martini right now. I'm not waiting. Uh, well, <laughs> well, there's Cindy our laugh. Sinclair. We're getting our laugh in. <laughs> <laughs> and Stephanie Dalton. Thank you so much, you guys. Great. Aloha. Wonderful show. Thank you so much. Aloha. Stay safe.